drugs. This is gonna be a hard story to tell. I know that because this is the fourth time I've tried to make this video. I'm gonna try real hard this time. This is gonna be the one. So, all right. I explained that my drug use started. It started when I was young. Like, you know, I was interested in drugs always. I'd read them about it in school. I'm like, what? They do what here? How? What are these things? You know, I'd read all the symptoms, paranoia, this and that, but that, whatever. That, I didn't think that was ever gonna happen to me. Obviously, that's what you think. Um, the drug use really started after I had cancer and you know I had I'd done six months of chemotherapy I'd, I'd done, smoked a bit of weed before that you know I got busted by my mum once and I I hurt her so bad she was so disappointed in me that I thought alright this isn't worth it I don't want to just smoke weed and ruin my relationship with my family so I bailed it for a long time and then in hospital you know I was like I'm gonna smoke weed, you know, when I'm when I can get out of this hospital I'm smoking weed and that's what I did. And I started smoking weed a lot while I was still doing chemo, but like the stuff I could do at home, like the chemo at home and whatever, I was smoking weed every day. And then um because I couldn't do much else, you know, like I was stuck at home, I wasn't allowed to go out and party or nothing. And then when the doctors told me you have to take chemotherapy once a week for two years, you can't drink while you're on this. I was like, what? Well, okay, I'll just do other drugs instead. Obviously I didn't tell that to them. But in the lead up to this, I'd had a break, like a three month break. So I had the six months intensive, I had about a three month break, I think. And in that three months, I was going hard. Like I was going out and I, I started taking, you know, I hadn't done pills and that before. I started taking pills, like ecstasy pills. And um, cause I, cause it was a guaranteed fun night. That's why I took them. I was like, you know, this could be one of my last nights on this earth. I don't know what's gonna happen. I've just had cancer. Like my perspective has shifted big time. My short term goals, you know, they're this day, you know, this, the next few hours, medium term is like a few days. Long term is a week, it's not years. You know, everything changed for me. So I was like, how can I guarantee to have a good night every time I go out, I take pills, I take drugs, guaranteed, which it was pretty much and um, so that's what I was doing and for three months I was going out and you know kind of just getting on it and um, then when they told me you've got two years that you can't drink for I was like cool no worries I'll just do heaps of drugs and that's what I did I'd go out with my mates they'd all be drinking I'd be taking pills they'd drink two or three times a week I'd take pills two or three times a week and I was just chewing through them, chewing through pills. And, you know, other drugs as well, like I was doing speed. Um, like pills was the thing I was doing most, the highest amount. I was doing a fair bit of speed. I was doing coke occasionally. Um, yeah, but, and, and smoking weed every day, but mainly pills was my drug of choice at the time. Um, when did it go bad? Well, it kind of went bad when I you know, I realized that I'd done a lot more drugs than I ever intended to do. And I was like, man, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. You know, I'm still doing them. I thought I was just gonna try this out while, you know, I was feeling like I could die any day. And I just got into this habit of doing it and relied on it for a good time. I was relying on the drugs so I could have a good time. I didn't even know how to have a good time out without drugs. I hadn't even done it. And, um, I mean, I wasn't going to tell this part of the story, but, you know, like I started selling all the drugs because I was doing so much. It started like this, where I was smoking heaps of weed every day at, you know, and I, and I, while well, I had cancer and whatever. And then someone would say, oh, you've got a bit of weed, can I have some? And I'm like, well, you can buy some. I'm like, I'm not, I can't afford to just give it away. And then, you know, more people knew I always had a fair bit of weed. So, oh, can I buy some? I'm like, well, yeah. And then I thought, well, if I'm, everyone's going to be buying weed off me, I'll buy more. That way I can get it cheaper and, um, you know, I can smoke for free, basically. And that's kind of how that started. And that, yeah, so, anyway, so that escalated. I probably won't go into that too much, but basically I did the same with pills. That escalated quite a bit. Um, where, yeah, I was buying more than I needed so I could sell some, so I could do drugs for free. And it all just, it was all just getting 
you know, I was just immersing myself more and more in this like drug culture, hanging with people who all they wanted to do was drugs, selling drugs, you know, even days that I wasn't doing drugs. And it was just this whole like snowball of me just going deep into this hole of not a good place, a dark place. You know, after I realised after a couple of years that I'd done way more drugs than I ever intended, you know, I remember starting to think about it, think about it, but that's just what all my mates were doing. We were all doing drugs, you know, like I found new crews of mates who I could go out with who I knew they'd be getting on the pills every time they'd go out and we'd, we'd do pills all weekend. Um, yeah, so, and that, that was what I wanted to do. During this time, you know, I'm doing my personal training course, I'm becoming a personal trainer and all this, and I did a lot of drugs, a lot, a lot, a lot of drugs, you know, between when I was 18 and when I was 23, and, you know, sold quite a bit of drugs too, and um, changed, the person I was changed, you know, I thought I was a hard unit when I was selling drugs, I thought I was a legend. You know, I thought I was like somebody important kind of thing because I was selling drugs to people because like, everyone's calling me up, calling me up, you know. And yeah, I don't know, I just thought I was a cool guy. Well, I wasn't. You know, I was still me, like I was still me, but you know, there was like a bit of arrogance there and there was just some things that weren't cool. So, I don't know, how do I explain this? I guess the drugs, like, oh... Oh man, I missed a massive part of this story. This is huge, right? So, when I turned 21, I went to Canada and did coke. I was snowboarding over there, right? But um, I did coke every day for the first three months I was there. As soon as I got there, one of the first things I did was buy coke because it's so cheap over there. And I was doing coke every single day before I go snowboarding, before breakfast like just all the time because uh, it was so cheap so so much cheaper than in Australia and yeah it was you know it was pretty gnarly but what when it got really gnarly was when I was you know traveling by myself in another part of Canada and um, had heaps of mushrooms over about four days and some acid at the end of that and I basically went into like a drug induced psychosis where ah, this is a long story that I wasn't going to tell like I forgot about it kind of but it's the important part I was literally crazy you know I was in a drug induced psychosis if you've seen the Truman Show you know where it's like Jim Carrey in this movie and this whole world's been built around him so he doesn't know that he's part of a movie there's cameras everywhere he doesn't know because he was born into it but everyone there's actors and everyone can watch him on tv and that's what i felt like i was on i was on my own kind of truman show but not only could everyone see and hear me all my thoughts were broadcast to anyone who wanted to tune in you know i was thinking things about aliens tuning in and you know like this was the wildest time of my life and i'm really skimming over this part maybe i'll go into more detail in another time but it was bad, you know, the cops, um, they put me in a cell one night for just being a little bit reckless. And, you know, some wild things happened in that cell, a lot of it in my mind, some of it real. And then, you know, that got a bit crazy and then they put me in a padded cell for the night. And, you know, during all of this, my dad came over because he could tell through my emails and that that I'd lost it. And he was wigging out, they were wigging out. You know, I was 20 and I was by myself, like in Canada, just traveling, didn't have anyone with me or nothing. So like, anyway, I went to a psych ward. I was there for four days and they let me go home promising that I would go home and, you know, continue treatment. And I was on these antipsychotic drugs for ages, like a few months or whatever, just fully like lost my sense of my grip of reality, lost it big time. I'm really skimming over this part of the story. Um, I'll, I'll go into more detail another time. But basically this was a massive, like a massive problem. And I had to go home, you know, I went home because I thought like my mum probably would have died if I didn't go home. And that was the reason why I went. Cause I was having a good time, don't get me wrong, during all this, I was having a really good time, but it was affecting the people I loved. Um, like this drug binge had just massively messed with my mind badly. I go home and, um, you know, I stopped doing drugs 
then and there because that's what my family asked of me and I'm like all right you know all right fair fair call and I stopped doing drugs for a while I don't remember how long for um but it was it was months and months before I even had a beer had a beer had a few beers next party that led to having pills again and um you know I used I was always a paranoid drug taker like I because I take so much I take so many pills in a night my mates would have two or three pills in a night, maybe. I'd have ten, you know? And then I'd smoke so many bongs after, and then I'd think that my friends were going to chop my fingers off, you know? Like, I was a very paranoid drug taker. Many, many, many times I got so paranoid the next morning that I thought my heart was going to burst out of my chest because I was so alert because I thought it was about to go down with people who I would generally trust. Like, it was very bad. So I was a paranoid person um, when I was on the drugs hard like that. <laughs> what a story. Um, so I get to this point where I'm starting doing drugs again, but I'm a little bit more careful about the drugs I'm doing. Um, you know, I'm not taking as many chemical drugs. I'm smoking a bit of weed and that still, but I'm mainly doing, like, when I can, mushrooms. So I was going to Bali quite a bit. You know, I go to Bali, I do mushrooms every day for two weeks because um, I found them, you know, somewhat medicinal for your mind. That's another story. But um, I didn't get paranoid on drugs like that, and I never got really back into drinking again. But these drugs stayed with me, right? And so you know, I'd, I'd be back, and I was doing them less. You know, I definitely wasn't doing pills much anymore in the in the later years. But I was still doing. I actually got quite into acid, and I was taking quite a bit of acid for a while there. Um, and this was right up until the point that right up until the point that I started working on the cruise ships, which was the year... So I went voiceless for the animals in 2014. Yep. The year before that, 2013, I planned the voiceless journey. The year before that, 2012, I was on a cruise ship. So 2011, um, I was still doing drugs, doing acid and that, and that was five years ago, so I was 24. Um, yeah, so when I was 24, because when I turned 23, I had this moment where I was like, I'm 23, what am I doing? I'm still doing so much drugs, like this is stupid. And I, I had like a big shift and I kind of bowed it a bit, but I was still doing quite a bit of acid. So anyway, just moving the drug use around to others. On the cruise ship, because I was working on cruise ships, they test you. Um, they can test you, they never did, but they, they can test you for drugs. And you, they drug test you before you, they did drug test me. They drug tested me before I went on the cruise ship. Um, and this was a job of a lifetime for me, personal trainer on cruise ships. I was so sick for it. So, you know, I was real excited and I didn't want to screw it up. I had a massive drug bender in Bali of, on, just on mushrooms before I went straight to London to do the training for the cruise ship course. Because mushrooms don't actually show up in those five and seven panel drug tests. It shows up only as food poisoning, if at all. Um, that's a hot tip for you. <laughs> anyway, so did seven days of shrooms, went there, did the training, started working on the cruise ships. Nine months, no drugs. The first time ever I'd gone this long, I think, uh, since I was 18 or whatever, without drugs. All those years I was doing drugs, I didn't really become a better person. You know, I, like I learned some stuff, whatever, but I'd been a personal trainer for all these eight years, for all these years since I was... 17, uh, since I was 18, sorry, whatever, 17, 18, something like that, and, um, yeah, 18, and I, I was a good personal trainer in the way that I was good with people, but in terms of my actual knowledge and the amount of study I'd done, I was lacking big time, you know, I was just lucky that I had good trainers around me a lot of the time, and I learned from them, but the, my own personal study, I hadn't done a great deal, I'd done some courses and that. And over all those years, like, there was so much I could have learned that I didn't. I didn't grow, right? And this is how I describe it. Like, it's like I was climbing this ladder of life before I started doing drugs. I was climbing ladder, climbing ladder, climbing ladder. I started doing drugs and I just got stuck. I got stuck between these few rungs, you know? And I just couldn't, I couldn't keep going because it was like I'd put this ball and chain around my ankle and it was just so heavy and that was the drugs. And so this nine months without drugs, 
I started growing, you know, like I started, I, started, I learned so much about health and, you know, I became a public speaker on that ship and I, you know, I learned, started learning about not eating animal products anymore. Like that was a massive thing in my life. And, you know, I read this huge book called Healing with Whole Foods, like this like encyclopedia sized book. I mean, I would never have done that before. And I just became a better person. I took steps on that ladder, you know. I became a better personal trainer that could help people more. I was really proud of myself. And I, you know, come, you know, made some progress in other parts of my life as well. So when it came time for the cruise ship to end, I was like, cool, the contract's almost up. I'm going to get home. I'm going to get so blazed. You know, I'm going to smoke up so much. And I thought, well, do I really want to do that? Because I've come a long way this year. You know, I've actually taken some steps. And I know if I do drugs, I'm just going to come back down here. I know where drugs take me. You know, I've been in dark places because of these things. And I, and I haven't made, you know, what have I got to show for it? What have I got to show for it? Nothing. Like, zero hazy nights a few fun memories that is seriously it. I've nothing to show for it man and um yeah just nothing at all and so I'm thinking about do I want to do drugs do I want to do drugs maybe not I don't, I don't know like I kind of like how I'm a better trainer now you know because that was what was really important to me at the time being a good personal trainer so I just left it I was like I don't know but I, I, while I was on the cruise ship, towards the end of the contract, I had booked to do a 10-day meditation course called Vipassana. And I thought, I'd never done it before, I thought, maybe I'll figure out about drugs at this meditation course. So I'm at, you know, I'm coming towards the end of the, um, the contract. I get off the cruise ship and soon later, like weeks later, I'm doing this 10-day meditation course. And it wasn't until... You know, I'm doing 10 days. I'm like, please, I hope I figure something out about drugs. Do I want to do them? Do I not want to do them? Don't know. And it wasn't until the ninth day of the 10-day course, right? Life-changing moment. After every day of meditation, at the end of the day, there's a video they show. And the video is the guy talking about the theory of the meditation and the practice and why it works and blah, blah, blah. And he tells stories. And he told this story and he said... The Buddha sees four types of people on this planet. There's people in the darkness going towards darkness. There's people in the light going towards darkness. There's people in the darkness going towards light and there's people in the light going towards light. Four types of people. I looked, I heard that and I was like, I'm usually in the light, you know, positive person going towards more light. But I realized in that moment that every single time I do drugs, I go from the light to the darkness every single time. And I'd never realized that before because I'd always done drugs, fooling myself, saying, no, I'm getting something good from it. It's making me more open, open-minded. It's making me more confident. Like it's, it's, you know, like it's a gift to have drugs. It makes you think differently than anyone else. Why wouldn't you use drugs? Blah, blah, blah. Now I realize how wrong I was, but I didn't at the time. I was using all these excuses why my drug use was justified. And um, so he said this, there's four types of people and I saw myself and I realized well, every single time I do a drug, I go from the light to the darkness. Might not be straight away, I might get high at first, but I, what goes up always comes down and I would always come down hard, heavy. And I'm like, why am I choosing that for myself? Some things are out of my control, you know, I can't always choose to go from the light towards the light. Sometimes I'm gonna choose darkness just out of ignorance. But this is one thing I have 100% control over. I don't have to put drugs into my body. And, you know, I was, after all that meditation too, I was excited. I was like, man, I feel so good, you know? I'm sick of choosing darkness. I wanna see how bright, I wanna see how bright I can shine. Like, what's up there on this ladder? What's up there? That's where I wanna be. I'm sick of this area. I wanna get up there. I wanna see how bright I can shine. And then I just said there and then, I'm like, that's it. Never again. Never again will I do drugs. And that was nearly four years ago. I have not done, I haven't had a sip of alcohol, I haven't had a puff of weed, half a pill, nothing. I haven't even had a coffee. I've had a couple of teas with caffeine in it when I forgot. That's it, I had nothing. I don't even think I've had any prescription drugs, but 
I've had no drugs since then and I have not wanted to because as soon as I stopped doing drugs, my life got so much better. So I didn't know what to do at first. I'm chilling at home, I'm like, okay, it's Saturday night. I'm just like, what do I do, what do I do? Didn't know what to do. And I just had to stick it out because I thought, you know, it's better to not know what to do with your time and just do nothing than it is to do drugs. I'm still doing better than if I was going out doing drugs. Things started happening. I started meeting different people. Like, hey, do you want to come for a surf on Sunday? I was like, surf? I'd usually be still awake from the night before when you're about to go for a surf. I could never have surfed before. I'd be like, yeah, all right, I'll start surfing. Started surfing. Started doing breakdancing, something I'd always wanted to do. I actually started on the cruise ship, um, which, you know, because I wasn't doing drugs as well. And, you know, kept that up for a while. And started planning this year-long vow of silence for animals. Started learning about animal rights, becoming confident in, you know, the theory of animal rights. If I had taken one drug, anything, one beer, during that year that I was planning the vow of silence, I guarantee you, I would not have done it. I was already hesitant about the vow of silence. Like, it was a big call. I was already very hesitant about it. If I'd have taken any drugs and I'd have got out of that clear mind frame, that, that clear mind frame, there's no chance I would have done it because that's what drugs do, man. They, they split your personality. You think one way and then you start doing drugs and then you start thinking a different way. And it's very confusing. So I would have, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this vow of silence, I'm gonna do this vow of silence, smoke a bit of weed. Then I'm like, should I do the vow of silence? Maybe I shouldn't do it. What am I thinking? I shouldn't do that. That's such a bad idea. That's what would have happened. So I'm just so grateful that I stayed away from the drugs. And I was rewarded in many ways from not doing drugs. Like the universe rewarded me, you know, I went to a, Method Man and Red Man concert once, best, best thing ever. Like, they're, they're my two favorites, man. You know, dudes out of Wu-Tang. And all my mates that I was with, they were on drugs. And I'm like, front and center today. We're going front and center, front and center. And they like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when the time came, they were so fucked up. They just kind of chilled back, whatever. I got the front and center, thousands of people behind me. Meth Man and Red Man, they're rapping to me, like pointing at my, you know, when I held my phone up, they're rapping to my camera. Um, Method Man jumped up on the guard rail, so I'm holding Method Man up, just slapping him, just like, yeah! And, you know, like, right in front of me, and Red Man threw his towel at me at the end, which I kept for months, like, dry myself after the shower and that. Um, I felt like that was a reward, you know? All my boys missed out on that amazing experience that I had. And I enjoyed it, whatever, but that was one of the highlights of my life that, that day, and I felt like that was a reward for not doing drugs. There have been countless rewards I've had from not doing drugs. I will never do drugs again. Why would I? Why would I choose darkness for myself? It has only been positive since giving them up. I wish I gave them up sooner. In fact, I wish I never did them. Um, I'll explain more about drugs another time because this video's getting long. But basically, I just wanted to tell you the history, my history of drugs. And, you know, because, man, I'm done with them now. And if you're struggling with drugs, you can be done with them too. Let them go, leave them behind, man. They're only slowing you down from a much better life. Like such a better life is possible. And there's so much more to life than doing drugs. Good luck. Mm -hmm.